So hold it, so you're at your son's wedding, yeah, and but it isn't traditional to play volleyball no, at a my wedding. Son's, my son's wife's family are very sporty, right. so it was us against them, and I resisted the urge to play football, all these exciting games, but on the last day I said, I'll have a gentle game of volleyball. Yeah. And I fell over after five minutes and ruptured my patella tendon. And then the shoulder you've done and something. The shoulder, shoulder's not as bad, it looks bad, but the knee's worse. Could we have a look at it? Just a little look. Okay. And what, what have you done to your shoulder? I've, I've dislocated my AC joint. Oh! Why on earth would you show us that? So what I could actually do is have an operation to put it back in, but it doesn't give any problems. And my wife quite likes the idea of me looking a bit deformed when I'm out on the beach and wow. stuff like that. <laughs> to keep everyone else keep away? Keep everybody away. Yeah, yeah. Not that the belly so does that, but... But seriously, you're not going to have that pop back in? No, it's aesthetically you could have it so it looks bad, but, I mean, they say, why have an operation if you don't need it? Well, I'll tell you why, John. So you don't know you've got a hamster growing out your shoulder. <laughs> That's why. I'm trying I mean, to would you have it pop back in? I think I would, yeah. yeah. But, um... <laughs> no, it's a shame. I was looking forward to John playing. I mean, John was some He was player. amazing. Amazing. Because, of course, the players of my age, like myself, David Seaman, you know, we played at a time when the culture was, you know, going out and doing what we did. There Harry managed it yeah. both. When all of a sudden that culture changed to be more professional. Because back then you didn't have nutritionists taking care no, of you in the same way, and you no, didn't have the, no. the awareness of, like... No, no but look, when we played in the 80s, pre-match meal I had... Um, and everybody had was a, a fitted steak. This yeah. is like one o'clock, twelve thirty. Had a fitted steak Thanks before we played at three o'clock. To give you energy to get then to the match. Then Arthur Wenger came and messed it up for everybody. Follow, followed followed by rice pudding. pudding. Yeah. I mean, couldn't you imagine if it was to eat a big fillet steak, loads of toast, and a big plate of rice pudding after? That would be about one o'clock time. You actually got your meal. Sometimes quarter past one. You're kicking off at three o'clock, and you've got to run around with that. And you. But why? In your but someone must have turned around and said, "You know what? I don't feel great. Maybe I'll just, I'll just skip the rice pudding well, today." You just dropped him, didn't you? If you can put up with it. Yeah. Being at Liverpool, for example, with Ronald Moran, God rest his soul, one of the old coaches, they had these idiosyncrasies, and he said you couldn't have any bread because when something comes out, a new fad that you can't have this, you can't have that. So there's no bread, but you can have as much toast as you want. So <laughs> they, have, they said they have loads of toast, and then we'll get the waitress to bring bread out, and he'd be going, "Take that bread away. We can't have any bread, but have some more toast." <laughs> Um, Harry uh, was well loved in the world of football and those who knew him outside. But when you went in, um, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here last year, that really everyone just fell in love with you. And that must have been a, quite a lovely feeling when you came out. But going in, you didn't really know what the show was, did you? Jonathan, I'd never seen one second of the show. <laughs> never, ever, I swear. <laughs> My wife kept saying to me, if you're going to do this, you've got to go and catch up, look at the show. I said, no, if I watch it, I'll probably I won't do it. So I just went in and, and I, I promise you, I honestly thought that there would be food. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I a said, hotel bed. I said, I've done these sort of <laughs> things before. I said, they always have a production to caravan round their back where you go and get a bacon sandwich or a cup of tea. <laughs> she said, I don't think there is in this programme. I said, yeah, there will be. But sure enough, there wasn't. <laughs> the most beautiful moment in the show, though, and I think one of the things that people loved about you was seeing the, uh, the respect and the love you showed towards your wife, Sandra, who wasn't there. And, of course, it was quite right. And this clip was just such a... I mean, it's very hard... I think you will get emotional when you watch this clip. I get emotional every time I see it. I don't know, do you get emotional when you watch this back? Do you know which clip I'm going to show here? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do know which one. I mean, because what had happened before she, before this happened, um, Sandra came in to meet me that day, I never had a clue. She'd been very ill. She had sepsis. So um, I nearly didn't do the show because she, she weren't very well. And I just was... All the time I kept... I said, look, if anything's not right, I've got to know, cos I'm out of here. As soon as if, if we get a message that Sandra's not good, I'm straight out, please don't. They said, look, someone will, will tell you. And I suddenly got a message to go to speak to the people in the, uh, the Bush Telegraph, and they said, you've got to leave the camp, don't go back in the camp, go down the stairs, turn left, there's going to be someone to produce a meet you, you've got to go. I said, well, where am I going? Am I doing a trial? They went, no. I said, can I go and get my water bottle? They went, no, you've got to go now, Im immediately, please. And I thought, something's wrong. So you feared the worst? I, yeah, I did, I feared the worst. I thought... Sandra's obviously not well, and they're going to tell me that, you know? Oh, man. So that was when I, when I saw her, it was like winning the... It was incredible It's a lovely moment. Me, this is know? from... I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, and this is the moment when Harry meets Sandra, not yeah. for the first time. That <laughs> 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 was like that a good yeah. movie, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, have a look at me. Such a lovely <laughs> moment on television. Yeah. 54 years! Yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. Long time. I love the fact you ask about the dogs first and then your children. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs, dogs okay, yeah. The dogs, oh, what about the kids? Before the right. grandkids, yeah. Uh, that's lovely. Oh yeah. man, you're welling up there. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Hey. No, don't know. I'm not even. Um, I'm the amazing. last person to do anything like that, honestly. Uh, we couldn't have you on the show without briefly talking about the World Cup here of 1990. <laughs> World Emotion, in which the beautiful young man that was John Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> 
displayed his rapping skills for... I mean, that's a handsome <laughs> fellow, isn't it? <laughs> Displayed his rapping skills first time. That must have been great fun to be and have a number one hit single. Well, first of all, when we did the song, we didn't know. Obviously, we, we, first of all, we didn't know it was going to be New Order. We thought it was just going to be the England lads, typical "Here we go, arms around each other." Yeah. So the majority of the lads decided, well, this song ain't going to be any good. They didn't so want to turn up. They didn't turn up. Mm. Only six people turned up. Wow. Me, Gaza, Peter Bersley, Des Walker, Steve McMahon, Chris Waddle. No one else turned up to do the song. So after the song was finished, we're just about to go, and someone in a drunken stupor said, "Well, why don't we just put a rap in?" So Keith Allen hastily wrote the rap, and I'd like to think, had I been one of the 25 members there, I still would have done the rap, but I only had six people to choose from. Yeah. And you remember the six? Gaza, Peter Beardsley, Steve McMahon. It wasn't much of a choice, so it was yeah. between me and Des. <laughs> it was between me and Des Walker, and um, Des is not black musically, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Des. <laughs> so I did the rap. We'd like John to do a bit of the rap, wouldn't we? If you don't mind, John. Can I sit and do it? I can't move on. You too can much sit and do it. Whatever you Packs do, though, too much. please just don't get that shoulder out again. <laughs> there we go. There we go. You got to hold a gig, but do it at the right time. You can be slow or fast, but you must get to the line. They'll always hit you and hurt you. Defend that attack. There's only one way to beat them. Get round the back. So catch me if you can. Cause I'm the England man. And what you looking at? It's the master plan, we ain't no hooligans This ain't a football song, three lions on my chest I know we can, we're playing for, for England. England England! There you go! Yeah, John Barnes, ladies and gentlemen! Fantastic! He's still got it!